Uh, apparent, Guess apparently what? Everyone's muted I now. forgot the button. <laughs> Thank so... you. Thank you. I will accept Sound. all gratifications and applause, accolades, and other things that prove that, yes, pseudo can at times be a noob. Welcome, welcome to your weekly MMO Buff show, where we show you high production quality and expert staffing. You know, I try so hard, but I swear that my staff and my team is out to get me. I, if you haven't seen the latest Cosmotronic, which is the one we did on Friday, I apparently am supposed to be attending troll camp to learn how to be a troll, because apparently I don't troll well, or I can't troll people well, although everyone seems to troll me, like all my hosts do. Um, so yeah, that's just one of those things. And I am reading Twitch chat. I'm just, it's, it, we have this delay between what we're actually doing and what's happening on Twitch of anywhere from like 20 seconds to a minute, depending upon how Twitch decides to do things. So we're a tiny bit, like it's different, but anyway, I will start over. I'll be like, hi everybody. I'm Sudo. Welcome to MMO Buffs Monday show. <laughs> Ah, uh, there we go. Can't be patronizing enough to myself. To you, Ten of Raster, <laughs> I will actually say what I was saying before when I was muted. Welcome. It is nice to see NK's co-tank here. Hopefully uh, you will enjoy the DPS show as much as the tanking show. And for those of you who have actually seen our healing show, hopefully you enjoyed the lessons learned from the Hive Leader himself. Oh, wow. And it does make things a little difficult. I will not lie, Jaredar. But first... Before we go too, too far, allow me to bring you the news. Now, here's a fun thing for you all, folks. We, as you know, here at MMO Buff are all about online gaming. It really makes a difference. I mean, one could say that because of our name being MMO, we're focused generally on massive multiplayer onlines, but we're not. We actually are interested in a lot of different games. Anything that is online and anything we can be analytical about, we're gonna sink our teeth into. However, here's the deal. I need your help. This Friday, Ms. Pa and I are sitting down with Brad McQuaid from Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, and we need to have an idea of what you wanna know. So please let me know what you want us to ask and what you want us to dig into. After we meet with them, we'll be putting the interview up on Monday's show. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that. And tappy, 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 Ico. Help Sorry, us I, I was just trying to interact with uh, Twitch chat ahead of time. Wow. So yes, there you go. He's being proactive, which is good of you. I appreciate that. First time. Yes. So <laughs> if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that that you want us to bring to the team at Pantheon, please let us know. This is going to be fun. We're kind of excited about this. Another thing, we are going to be having a contest coming up very, very soon for Resed, and this is for the Res that is happening in Birmingham. I'm so not saying it correctly because it's not pronounced with the it's British always, access. It's only Resed in Birmingham as well. Yes. Res. EGX London when they do it down in Elfcourt. Right. So yes, we're doing Sorry. it for Res. Sorry. We're all confused ourselves here, and I blame Ico. I really do. But anyway, so we are going to have a contest coming up for people to actually win tickets to a Saturday. And there's also going to be a side project for the awesome people who are basically you guys who watch our shows frequently. If you can get yourselves down to Birmingham, we will be having a contest where you guys get to come join us for lunch. Do you really want to hang out with me? for lunch. Do you want to hang out with Mizpah? Of all people you want to hang out with, I honestly think you should want to hang out with like Aiko. Wait, nah, he's over there. Nah. I'm terrible in person. <laughs> terrible yes. on the internet, let alone in person. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> well, we'll get to the trolling and everything else that goes with that later. And of course, some other news. I have a special guest joining us tomorrow for the campfire that is Vistalm as we discuss recruitment being recruited and recruiting as part of the campfires campaign to spread awareness and build strong communities in online gaming Wednesday I have a brand new co-host who will be joining me for every single top draw that we do pretty much into the future and for those who don't know we took a brief break on that but top draw on Wednesday is all about card games trading card games online card games everything from Hearthstone to Hex to Soul Forge 
Yeah. And I've got a new co-host who you guys have seen if you've watched Top Draw before, but if you haven't, yeah, someone new who is actually a world champion in trading card games. So that'll be fun. And then uh, Friday, I think Kai is going to be joining us for Cosmotronic again. So there, that's all the news. That now? is a full docket, isn't it now? Oh, it is. Absolutely, absolutely is. I'm really looking forward to it. But now we get to get to the meat of the show. Now I get to talk to and introduce you guys. Because, yes, Aiko, while people know you, they know you as, you know, someone who does write for us, use articles, uh, which is the Unstable Solar Entity All About Wildstar column. But you're also a DPSer and everything. So I'm kind of picking on you for multiple roles. So I'm going to let you go first to just take a quick moment to introduce your history when it comes to DPS. And then I'm going to pick on Steve. Okay, I'll see. We're, we're, both, we're both sort of on the same side, so if you point in the same direction, you should be all right. Sort of. <laughs> but go ahead, Aiko. Give a little bit of your DPS background and history for the world. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, I didn't start out as a DPS. I started out as a healer and made my way up um, for about five years in World of Warcraft as a healer before switching on to an Elemental Shaman as my go-to raiding DPS class. Um, then, from other games... Onwards, after leaving World of Warcraft, I've led my guild um, as a D ranged DPS character, normally focusing on anything sort of ranger, pet hunt, um, pet archetypes to rogue. This is really coming into Rift here, where I could switch between the two in the sort of the flip of a coin. But um, now I've been raiding and pushing for progress raiding as a DPS for about four years now, on top of the five below that as a healer. Interesting. So you said that you moved up from healing. Are you trying to say that DPS is like the next natural I, I evolution did, I, 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 of I a did healer? Not mean up. I did not mean up before I offend any actual he budding healing players out there. No, I meant <laughs> cross into a alternate yet just as vitally important role. Okay. That was very political of you. <laughs> <clears throat> and then, of course, we have Steve who is joining us from, and yes, for those of you who are eagle-eyed, his carpet is red and his walls are painted black. Welcome to the DPS gamer that is known as Aussie. <laughs> Take a moment and introduce yourself and give a little bit of your history when it comes to DPS. I'm going to expand on that a bit and give you a bit of my gaming history because you don't know me as well as I go. And just in general, um, I'm an avid gamer storyteller, writer, and member of the Guild Enigma. Um, I grew up in a home where tabletop role-playing was common. Um, thus, I grew up being a GM for tabletop RPGs, and still am. Um, when I first learned how to type, it was in order to see DOS run. <laughs> <laughs> That's old school. Was that for games? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, back in that day, I was playing games like Interceptor, Empires, and Armada 2525, which are all turn-based strategy games. Back when that was the only real justifiable games, in my opinion, for the computer. And mm. consoles were where action games were starting to launch. <clears throat> you know, like Duck Hunt, and Mario, and every other action side-scroller that came after. Hmm. Uh, over time, I ended up playing a lot of strategy games. The Civilization, Heroes of Might and Magic, Age of Empires, Age of Wonders, Master of Orion, Starcraft, pretty much anything. Um, but I started to branch out into other genres gradually. Um, fast forward a few years later, and I'm playing Diablo 2 pretty consistently. <laughs> I was seeing the uh, World of Warcraft banners between matches. And a friend said I should try it out. He was one of the uh, players at my table for tabletop RPGs. So when I first started playing MMOs, it was in WoW. And I was a noob at one point in time. I can remember those days of I had no idea what was going on in an MMO, but I understood RPGs and how little MMOs have to do with RPGs. And then, after a while of playing WoW, I ended up branching out into other MMOs, 
not end up going back and forth between WoW and something new. So I tried City of Villains, City of Heroes, Tabula Rasa, Risk Your Life, Age of Conan, Eve, Guild Wars 1 and 2, Champions Online, I baited that, um, Aeon, which I baited but I didn't end up buying, Sotor, Rifts, The Secret <laughs> World, which I baited, Insert and, MMO here. and like <laughs> 5 or 10 that I can't remember. And in every single one of them, I am deeps first and support second. If I am made to support by way of tanking or healing, I will very likely deeps in addition to my support role. It's hard to pry me out of the deeps role. Ah, isn't that the case? Now, I know for a fact that when it comes to DPS, there are... Just like with tanking, just like with healing, some very common stereotypes. So when we talk about DPS, we literally mean damage per second, however yep. nicknamed being deeps. So we're, only t we're just talking about damage in general. One could state that every class is a member of the deeps category because... You do hit, you do damage if you're a tank. If you're a healer, as NK pointed out in the previous one, put up your shadow word pain, so to speak. However, there are some very common stereotypes that are applied and some myths to the average DPSer, to name a few. Let me just keybind one ability to all of my keys, slam my face down on my keyboard, and roll my face across the keyboard. That's all I have to do to be a deeps, right? Or if you were a warlock. <laughs> we'll get to that in yeah, a second. I was a warlock. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. Then you have, it doesn't take any skill to really play. Because all you have to do is just press some kind of order and magic happens and bosses die and you get loot, right? Or it's the easiest role in the trilogy, trilogy, the trinity, to actually play. So... The reality is there's myths, and part of what we want to do is debunk them. So what I want to do is I want to pick on each of you, and I want you to tell me whether you agree with the actual stereotype, whether you disagree with the stereotype, or, you know, just give me your thoughts on stereotypes in general. Let's debunk the myths. So who wants to be my sacrificial lamb? We've, we've actually got a question coming from Stout Punk. I'm oh. not sure if you want to handle it. Ooh, go ahead. For the end, or if you want to sort of go Aiko, for you've just nominated yourself. So go ahead and pose the question from Stout Pint. Right, this is at Aussie. So yes, I said it right that time, I think. Most yep. engaging uh, slash complex DPS class you've ever played across your long ah. prolific career. Um. Hmm. It's hard to say because games are evolving as much as they are. And with more action-based games, I'd have to say the new age of MMOs is giving me more challenge to manage priorities rather than cycles and to get limited action sets with priorities rather than shared cooldowns. That ends up being more engaging and more entertaining than having 40 buttons on the screen and sitting there slogging away um, against an enemy that has no tactical awareness or sense of how to use the environment against me. So telegraphs are becoming pretty common in games. Being Guild mobile is becoming pretty common. Yeah. Limited action sets become pretty common. But where that started with me would probably be Champions Online. Champs was where I first saw that sort of stuff, where you had active blocking, active charge abilities that you could break, you could occasionally move while you were fighting, but there were a lot of elements they started to incorporate back then, and considering how much freedom of choice you had with your abilities, it was more engaging in the mind of building your character not just the action of it okay so basically what you're saying is because of the different changes that have actually occurred with mmos um the actual role of the dps like nk was saying about tanking has sort of evolved over time however yeah. the real challenge isn't always anymore the pushing to have the highest dps because you know one of the things we've discussed on our monday shows before is that dps isn't just 
about maxing those meters. There is utility involved. And anyone mm -hmm. who chooses to deny the utility side of things, for example, sheeping as a mage or, you know, sleeping with Viper Sting as a hunter. I think that's what it was from World of Warcraft. I, I can't remember. Wyvern. Wyvern Thank you. But, you know, having that kind of utility is important. However, with the, the current state of MMOs forcing people to pick and choose, sort of like with the, the limited action sets or with the limited amount of abilities you have or the way your specs work, it's actually creating more of a challenge because you need to pick and choose to hit the right balance. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that, Aiko? Um, I mean, from the moment they enter, have built in talent specs and anything that limited what abilities and what types of damage you can do more in so i mean to look at a mage you know they can spec they could spec into fire or frost once upon a time and you would oh with please there was nothing more frustrating as a fire mage walking into molten core you couldn't because <laughs> everything was bloody immune to fire you had to be frost but am i not right point, when, when when those talent trees <laughs> this that they 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 innately limit your action your ability set anyway so i mean it's a big um argument regarding limited action sets is that people will say well yeah, you had 50 abilities, but you might only have actually rotated in about 13 of them at any given time anyway. Well, so how many abilities are you losing when you go down to a limited action set? I think it depends, obviously, mm. upon the game design. I mean, I will sit here and I will pretend to be Mispa for a second, so give me one second while I put on my Mispa voice. <clears throat> don't put on the voice. Just don't. No. Just don't. don't. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> One of the things that a lot of DPSers are at least complaining about is that games are getting easier. They're getting easier to play. They're getting easier because you don't have to worry so much about your rotation. But what ends up happening is if a game has designed it so that you have to make literally critical choices about what you're using in your limited action set, that to me seems to be more important than say having the 30 buttons that Mispa loved having because it just gave him the ability to do all of the things all of the time. But if you have to, and you are forced to literally make choices that could impact a group, a raid environment, to me that seems to be more of a challenge, more fun, more exciting because I mean, you can't have all of the stuff available to you. Now, some people are going to disagree with that, but I wanna pull this back on track do you guys firmly believe that DPS is the easiest role in the Holy Trinity? Or do you disagree with it? Uh, I think it varies on boss to boss, to be honest. It, every, everything is based around the encounter. Difficulty is based around the encounter and what section of your team is going to be pushed. If you're on a gear check, it tends to be everyone's going for it and you need that maximum output, at which point your DPS is equally as vital as everyone else. If you're on a very strategic or healing heavy boss but very low in range timer then yeah you know you might be able to say okay to be honest we could actually trade out three or four dps here and just do the boss with more healers or tanks because you don't need those requirements it, it's all down on the boss as opposed to just looking at the roles and saying tanks are most important healers are second and dps is the third so it, it, it's very specific interesting that, that's my belief on it anyway Everyone in almost every game can do damage, as we were talking about a moment ago. But that doesn't mean everyone's a deeps. Even among the damage-focused classes across games, some are more effective at different types of damage dealing, like spike, sustained, attrition, control, support, or hybrids, where they're actually being a support class secondary, whether that's tank or healing. Mm. So, while every role has to kill mobs at some point in their gameplay, it's the deep to our end who end up playing with fire, as they have less ability to mitigate and recover when they push themselves to their limits. Okay. So now I pull out a fun question. And this is kind of a small part of why we're doing this trilogy, while we're looking into each of the individual parts of the Trinity. You know, one of the key things that we talked about with healing is being able to heal well, not just press a button and heal, aka use your biggest spell all the time. And then when I spoke with Enki, talking about what actually separates good DPS from exceptional DPS, in his case it was tanking, he sort of realized, well, you know, just simply being an exceptional player can make you a really good tank, Except throw in situational awareness, because we're going to pick on him. Hmm. Now, what I would like to know from you two, 
And I'll kind of let you go back and forth because I don't want to eat up everybody's time on just this one specific thing. But what makes a DPS or go from being the quote unquote keyboard face connection rolling back and forth, which I would consider pond life versus the, you know, person who presses the number three button for, you know, arcane bolt spam or something like that versus the exceptional player of a DPS. What do you believe are the traits that are making them exceptional? I mean, how do you become exceptional as DPS? And I'm going to pick on Aussie first. Right. So as mentioned, um, bad players and or whatever you're bad at is kind of a sign that your skill's low or maybe you just don't understand the game or you haven't found a style that's right for you or whatever the case may be. But to get out of that mire of bad and get into good, much less than excellent, good deeps manages not to wipe a group. Uh, try not to frustrate <laughs> tanks and healers. You end up beating the tank and healer on the meter, as it were. Your threat management still has to be on point. You still have to manage your control responsibilities. And you should be consistently improving your personal efficiency. A good DPS should be all that. At least. Okay. So what makes someone exceptional, then? The mastering of it? Oh, goodness. Um, okay, in addition to all the good Deeps qualities, I believe it requires a willingness to personally test theories until you understand why that theory is suggested and find out if you agree or disagree and can back up what your belief is with your own research, place testing, and theory crafting. Mm. It means pushing yourself to the bleeding edge of your own skill level, which is going to mean spending time in the game and pushing yourself into uncomfortable situations. And that means dying occasionally, but getting to that verge of knowing what you can do and what you probably shouldn't. Um, it also means that, and there's a, an evident test. Um, if you are an excellent deeps or you have an excellent deeps hanging around with you, they improve the performance of whatever group they're a part of, in addition to their own personal performance being rather high. Mm -hmm. The fights will feel like it's on easy mode, because everything's dying nice and fast, no runners are escaping, key enemy actions are being countered, the healer isn't getting griefed, the tank isn't getting overrun. Also, even though you should know what you should and shouldn't do in the encounter, an excellent deep shouldn't be afraid to take a hit if you know the tricks to live through it, and you're not trying to go out of your way to frustrate the tank, but it's to keep grief off the healer. You're better bait. And if you know how to control the kite, it's part of the role. So good DPS don't end up acting as tricky as excellent DPS. Mm. Now, see, we have Infliffy saying uh, the easiest role, question mark, shocky face. <laughs> Got to throw that in there. The skill cap is probably the highest on DPS. And based on that comment, Aiko, along with the question about what separates good from exceptional in DPS, do you have anything to add? Or do you agree or do you disagree? Um, well, personally, it's hard to disagree with many of the points that Arthur seems to be making, but he seems to be making them all. <laughs> which is, <laughs> Why do which we is need great. Aiko? <laughs> which, which, which is great. So... I mean, I could sit here and pretty much repeat back to you what you've just heard. I mean, I, I, when Arthur started talking about the theory crafting side of it and making sure you understand how your class is working in the behind scenes, I was thinking, right, I'm going to come at this and talk about I want someone with instinct. And then Arthur just moved on and started talking about that player who's going to pick up mobs and kite them around <laughs> and dive in and do all, all the reactive stuff that you want an exceptional player to do. Um, so I'm going to play... <laughs> the the devil's advocate card if i can Ooh, because I, okay. I mean, it's the only way i think we're going to get some sort of fresh discussion out of this and i'm going to say that you talk about rotations and timings and getting your personal efficiency better yeah. but this is a computer game macros people who raid at the high end tend to have pretty high-end gaming hardware macro programmable keys and macros set up to handle either key rotations or key presses in perfect timing for them 
Now, whether or not you agree with the use of them, people do out there. People out there do it, and people out there get the same results in DPS and numerical output as people who might just be really talented and actually really, really work hard at being good. So, are you yeah. actually asking something along the lines of if you are able to master the macro and still get the same kind of quote unquote numbers, does that make you still exceptional? Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're if you've I... taken all the thing that apparently takes skill and put it on one button press. I, I have a hard look at time. Any of my former raiding warlocks at all when I talk about this. I have a hard then time I'm believing still... <laughs> that you could possibly take the skill set of recognizing a mob is doing something to a healer, thus intercept it, or ah, taking ah, a no, rate no, no, that no, no, particular no, no, no. skill I, I, set um, of hey, I need to I'm control this. I'm looking specifically at the numerical output here. I'm, ah, I'm you're looking at specific the, numerics. I'm not talking about being brain dead and just thinking you can stand there and only press one button the entire fight. I'm talking about your entire rotation and what actually produces your damage output is on one button. Whoa. And so, is that skillful, or can you know can a reactive healer? It's like or gaming the system. Here's my take on that. I did develop some macros, but there are things like tying my trinkets to an ability. And then disabling the error noise for when it's on cooldown. It was never um, elaborate cast sequences. If I was ever going to do a cast sequence, it would make one button become um, rotating between two different functions, just so that I could have more of the keys that were convenient for my fingers to be able to flip. But even that, you have to learn your rotation. So whatever user interface you are using to play the game, whether it's using macros or a 15 button mouse or you re-key your entire keyboard so that you have every ability at your fingertips it doesn't really bug me if you manage to adapt to whatever your peripherals are to play at a high enough level to compete with me i'm happy that someone can compete with me but you whatever don't, you tricks don't think and crutches they need but you don't think that person is less skilled than you then. So if you come up against a guy and you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe and you're giving it your all and you stood there pressing one button um, to do the exact same he... sort of damage output, well, you know, he's still running around and doing everything you do in PvP to play well, but all of his damage is coming off one thing. I don't think that just because he's figured out a shortcut, I should be sad about if he's cunning enough to figure out how to map everything to one key and make that work, then more power to him. But reality is, with these limited action sets, I don't see that being realistic. Because things are no longer going to be sequential. They're going to be priority, and you're going to need at least your five or seven keys, at least three with any frequency. The other ones might be circumstantial. But you're going to have rotations where something has better priority than another thing and in this circumstance you need that and so forth well i'm going to pop in here and point out that we've had a couple people from the chat make some rather interesting comments um for example um dps from influffy influffy seems to have a lot of really awesome comments so i'm going to take my hat off to you influffy um but, oh no, I just, that face from Iko says I probably shouldn't have done so, but hey, there you go. <clears throat> but uh, being able to control yourself and your surroundings, I think, is incredibly important. I think that kind of goes for all of the different um, roles within the Holy Trinity. I mean, one key thing that we see repetitively throughout the previous shows, and it's, it's even coming across clearly here, is that you kind of need to know your skills. You need to know what your rotations are you need to know what your abilities are you just need to know if you can take that ico and turn that into one button you know that's cool but the reality is if you're just relying on that one button just like if i was a healer and i was just relying on that one button to heal i am not pulling my weight because there's just so much more to it than just quote unquote the numbers you know healing efficiency is something that as a healer i shoot for i am not about to sacrifice the raid just because i want to make certain that my overhealing is not above 0 0.1 percent <laughs> i mean that's kind of stupid but you know being able to play in the mini game well exactly i mean i i did that in a heroic once and i just didn't heal people and i i was able to keep like my healing you know overhealing down to an insane amount but that was boring to me in the end so i i 
spent more time DPSing, but that's a whole different side of things, and we're not going to go with that. <laughs> However, what we are going to do is we're going to move on. Now oh, I'm going the siren to... call of deeps. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to reply to uh, to Stout Pint there with, with his uh, Feral Cat DPS rotation picture. Oh, there God. There's only one Feral Cat Carpal DPS tunnel. rotation picture. Carpal Tunnel. That was... Uh, John yes. f***ing Madden! And now I get to officially bleep the YouTube stream of this. Congratulations, Oops. Ico. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's okay. Rigid MA. Yes. Now, moving on a little further, you guys are both in a raid, okay? You've cleared trash with your raid group. You are presented with a boss that you have never gone up against. You are the first people to be confronted with this boss. There are no strategy guides. <coughs> there mm -hmm. are no videos and how-tos that you can watch. You guys get to see this for the very first time, and you are DPS. Now... Just for fun, I'm going to make Aiko a melee DPS. And just for fun, I'm going to make Aussie a range DPS. What I'd like <laughs> to know is what goes through your head. Is there a checklist? And considering the fact that you're DPS and this is a raid going on, what is it you're looking for? So... Can I, can I shoot first there? I guess I will let you go first. Get your scruffy well, mug so up on the screen. Talk to me. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not too. I'm not too uh, much of a fan of this ultra zoom that it goes to on the main screen. But let's do it anyway. Um, firstly, I'd, I'd never, quite, never know what we're going up against because I'd always send Fluffy in on the first poll just to see what would happen. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So I'd figure. I I'd, have we'd someone have some to sort sacrifice. Of idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> There's always one. He's just like, go on, go on, go on, and watch him get murdered. Um, but on a more serious note, <coughs> I would have prepared for the raids. I would have known that we're up against new content. I mean, if I wasn't raid leading, which I tend to do of late, um, I mean, what else can you do? If you're completely unknowing as to the boss that's come up against you, you haven't done any raid testing, you haven't read any patch notes, you haven't read any ability stuff, the only thing you can do is be prepared yourself. You know, you've got your standard DPS loadout ready to go pushing the numbers because normally on a progression fight you just want to see how far you can get because there's no point building a strategy where you're just going to hit another uh, phase that's going to wipe that strategy out and that's tying back into the LAS system actually there and limited action sets where you've got to know ahead of time what you're going to come up against um, so no for progression damage abilities make sure I'm you know giving the raid my entire focus not watching videos or putting music on and get to it have a good stock of potions <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be here all night. Ico <coughs> is melee DPSing. So in your brain, there is absolutely nothing different that you should be doing as a melee versus someone who's ranged. Versus somebody who's ranged, I mean, I need to be more aware of what we're coming up against. There's a lot of evaluations you can do against the boss fight. Mm -hmm. Historically in World of Warcraft, if you came up against the dragon, that meant it had a cleave and a tail swipe at the minimum. So you're effective fighting area with this sort of arc coming out from the side of the body and you didn't want to sort of be in either of the rest of it for the fear of getting cleaved or knocked over which would then result in further pain or death um so yeah i mean you can get those kind of impressions from it i mean i, I have a if i'm melee i'm looking in the boss's bum the entire time so i need to be aware of what's going on so i'm going to zoom my mouse out I'm going to have a look for any dangerous looking part for the boss and I'm going to stand behind him and take it easy and wait until the uh, tank says go for it. So you will continually be aware of your surrounding situational awareness. Yeah, so I thought we covered that, that kind of into it. I mean, obviously, <laughs> um, if we're talking about Wildstar specifically, I'm going to telegraph. So it's don't stand in the red. If we're talking about any other MMO, it's don't stand in the red. <laughs> the, the, the guy to surviving <laughs> when you're trying to just push for DPS and push for like percentage health knockdown is quite simple. It's don't stand in the stuff that'll hurt. And it tends to be red. Well, here's where I actually get to pick on Aussie really quick. Do you remember our motto from back in the days when we used to raid and hit I something was, for the first time? I was going to bring up the mantra because he almost had the first step of the three step mantra <laughs> Watch your feet, kill the ads kill the boss. It is universally applicable to every boss fight. 
<laughs> kill things, isn't it? I mean, things spawn. They've got red I mean, bar and they've got HP. It... If you bring it to zero, you win. What? Watch your feet. Don't no, stand in stuff. No, no, oh my goodness. There is one fight. Oh look, there's on um, there's stuff coming in that's gonna hurt people and is going to be wild and chaotic and we should probably control slash kill it in a manner that doesn't grief our healers and our tanks. Someone's gonna probably pick it up eventually. And then once that's all handled, I suppose we go back to tank and spank the boss. <laughs> Charidor says awesome. kill it before you die. <laughs> 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 but I will point out, there was actually a boss fight where it was the job to actually get the health to 100% in order for the fight to stop. Just a wonderful like... healing fight, yeah. Yay! Yeah, except for the weird green dragons and stuff, yeah. But anyway. Most, most games, as we've been discussing, have either cycles or priorities, and you have to know your own class and the game you're playing, obviously. Do the prep work, get your consumables, have your build right, your gear right. And another part of that with raiding is knowing the synergy that's going on in the game and in your raid group. Being able to exploit vulnerabilities other raid members are going to put up on the targets and knowing how to control as a group so that you don't have people burning counters uselessly. So you don't have people double stunning something that needs one stun and then being short one later like Would doing that stuff is about from more of a, a raid leader perspective though i mean in my mm, own experience that... a lot a lot of these decisions they tend to come down from the raid leader to the class channels to the members so your class leader it won't be so much a checklist you'll have to do it'll be a checklist that the guild's organizational structure's got to do so it'll come down in chat channel like your melee rogue yeah to whatever. a degree like right so, you know, Rogue A, you're on first interrupt Rogue B, then Rogue C, and then you go round and round and round because you cool down for cycling yeah. on perfectly. I, I, hey. Sorry, I, I didn't go into that kind of stuff, or I didn't think about that kind of stuff, because I've always seen that as more of a guild slash raid organization as opposed to what you do. Yeah, I, I can see it being a shared thing, where it's on my mind, because mm. I raid assisted for as long as I did, and that's kind of like raid leading minus the organization pre and post. <laughs> um, but like having someone doing the call outs so that you're focusing fire and having people specifically who know their class well enough that they're just watching for all the crap you've never seen before so that after you wipe they can go well this is what caused it so stuff like that mm-hmm and as a range deeps I would be in a prime position to be one of those watchers as opposed to a Melee deeps, who's going to very probably be dancing for his or her life. Definitely. That, that, that's, I, I, was, I definitely agree with that. I mean, you're going to be sat at, what, 30 to 40 meters away from the boss, and then you can scroll your camera out to max. Yeah. So you can get a real view of the arena. Have the... As I said, a melee is going to be staring at a boss's ass for the next 30 minutes. Yeah, have a cushy job. Be part of the range crew. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Our DPS is easier. I'm waiting till they reward melee deeps with a significant damage increase over range, so that despite the fact that they will always have ineffective deeps down times because of their dancing, that it will make up for it in their spike capabilities. Ah, but that's not how a uh, game dev seems to balance around that issue of melee v range. They tend to prefer to stack survivability onto the melee rather than to yeah. up, the, uh, up their damage to match that of range. Yeah, that. It, it occurs to me that, you know, slap heavier armor on the melee is a kind of trope that goes on. But in a raid, you could be wearing tissue paper. It's all anyway, the same. Yeah. Red damage is red damage. It's going to murder you in a raid. Like, it's all nice that in solo, the guy who has to stand up nose to nose with the thing that's looking at him doesn't get hit as hard. But he's still getting hit in the nose when his job is to stab it from the back. And let's not forget as well, melee DPS also tend to suffer from lower um, output because of the movement. Yeah, in, the dance. Especially in games where you could not actually, you know, do a lot of attacks while moving. You have to stop and stop and stop and constantly do a sort of uh, stutter around the boss to keep dodging damage. Mm-hmm. Whereas the range, we've always been very happy, you know, just sat up miles <sighs> away. It's taken like five to ten second intervals on even constant movement fights. And I have to say, at least with what I've seen of 
the way games are progressing towards more action-based, more telegraphs, more movement, that is putting ranged more on the back step than it probably will melee, for myself at least. I've done both roles, and being in melee, you're kind of used to moving, just as a matter of survival. Ranged, you can get lazy, and in the more and more <laughs> action games, they are going to punish you for being lazy. I, I, I tell you what, if you want to talk about getting punished for uh, not staying at ranged um, when you play ranged class, all you have to look at is a recent Team Wildstar stream. Um, Pappy uh, v Frost, you could see where Frost and Pappy didn't move around on ranged classes. And, the and they basically got eaten and alive. And murdered. Yeah. Because they weren't, using, they weren't using their tool sets to keep away and keep them away from them. Now, keep the enemy away from them, sorry. I pounce in here and I state that healers and tanks have stated that they can get into a zone. I'm assuming that you guys get into a zone as DPS as well. Hmm. You're going to hate this. No. I'm going to say it depends on the fight. Um, no, that's, that's fine. Here's the yes and no from my perspective. Um, I know music can affect me, especially if it's a fight that's on farm. The higher the BPM, the better I'm going to play. Just I'm going to be spamming more. I'm going to be more proactive. And the more tranquil the music, probably the lazier I'm going to get with my spamming. And I'm sorry. I, I, I have to share more this. Cleaves. I, I have to share this with the world because this, to this day, yeah. is still something that I find funny. Uh, as has been pointed out in all the previous shows, I've been a healer and I love healing. But I've taken the chance to go DPS and tank quite a bit and. I, as a tank, went in with my healer, who is normally my tank or DPS, which is Aussie. And we went in, and all I hear over TeamSpeak or Vent or whichever particular voice application we're using is, Tree Sway. Because <laughs> he'd put on this, like, the, the most laid back music, and he's just like, oops, as I whack my mic, just Tree Heal. Just this very gentle thing. And he kept telling me he was falling asleep because he was getting bored. <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 I blame music me. for that, but I also blame, blame the tree sway because it's slightly hypnotic from the druid days back when you could maintain that form. And then they brought it back, but you know, as it is. But yes, but with, as you were saying. With more and more action and more and more random crap that's happening in any given fight, the dynamicism of just encounters not being as static tank and spanks the zone is more getting into the groove of getting your rotation down i have a bad habit of watching my buttons rather than watching the screen like i'll see my feet and i'll see my character's buttons but i won't see what's going on in the game as much because i don't want to miss any gcd and i don't want to miss the next two to three buttons that i'm going to be pressing when they're coming up and what's going to be next in sequence, and I'm also have the cast bar of my enemies close enough that I'll be able to see my interrupts and everything, but I don't get to see much of the game that we're all playing. It's most of the time micromanagement of little friggin' icons. So getting in the zone for me <laughs> UI is game. when... I, I, yeah. I think a lot of raiders will probably, uh, probably say they've had that at times. Or they're they just really bar watching, you know, because you're just watching the pure cooldowns of everything as they scroll across your screen, and... Why make a pretty fight when the reality is all we're looking at is these little tiny UI you, buttons, you know? Maybe that's the benefit of the limited fun. action set. It is. And the, the groove or the rhythm for me is when I can get into a character deeply enough that I start noticing the animations, the sounds of the character, and I don't need to look at the bar anymore. That I know without looking at the bar most of where my resources are sitting and the speed at which I'm using them and gaining them and balancing that little mini game out. That's the zone for me mm -hmm. when I am no longer having to watch the bar. Right. And you, Aiko, you said yes and no as well for zoning. Did you, uh, sorry, I got lost in what I was saying, really. Did you, did you <laughs> repose the question to me? Your zone. Do you reach one? Yes, no. I, I think I just did. I think I just did. <laughs> <laughs> zone by found proxy. the Ico zone. <laughs> That's uh, the thing. The healer is here. The tank is gone. Two DPS are together. No one matters. I can tank. 
And it's, it's gonna kind of tie in. I've done a lot more of my DPS years have been spent as a raid leading DPS, but I will profess that there is a a definite zone of like, paying attention to the game. But I found it in both my healing years and my DPS years mm. is that you definitely sink into it and things. It, it's for me. I relate it much more down to muscle memory rather than actually stepping into a zone or needing some music or. It, it just kind of comes to me after practice. I'll get, I'll find something that I like. I find something that works. It might not be 100% the best build to play, but it'll be something that I can play extremely well and keep up there with the other players who are doing the same. Um, and I can just flip into that. I I, I will know, you know, control one, control two, control three, four, and and that's my unloading salvo of abilities, and I can just do it while looking at the game. Mm-hmm. Um, so, right. so for me, it, it's much more comes from practice. I, I would say. Okay. A lot of practice and a lot of repetition. Now, yeah. I have asked the Hive and I have asked NK for the top five most important traits. <laughs> now, that is an evil laugh. That is a very evil laugh. However. Mm. I am going to be a little easy on you guys and actually kind of have you pick three, roughly. And if you agree... But I got five. Oh, you came prepared. <laughs> I got five. Okay. So we'll go for five. I, I, I got five back. and they're done. I was going to go with three, but DPS... They're even in order of priority. DPS is prepared. You see, Ooh. this is the difference between tanks, healers, and deeps. We do theory craft, and we do friggin' hours of labor and oh, of work. <laughs> we prepare. Pissing off 60% of MMO players everywhere! <laughs> True, you guys. Uh, you guys just have to show up. You we know, have to no, compete I... for spots. <laughs> he has a point there, I, I, see, I, have, I, have, I have so many arguments against this. So I, I, I don't know. So many different... But, oh. you know, to be fair, I did say during the heal, or the tank show, you know, who needs deep? So, you know, it is kind of, you know, a play on the continuation of the, yeah, the separation. It's it's done with love. But go In ahead. In all seriousness, we, we ain't getting crap done without tanks and heals. Yeah, well, exactly, right? <laughs> if the HP ain't gonna hit zero, you ain't gonna get any loot. So... Like, everyone's got to be there in the Trinity, so... That's why it's called the Trinity. I mean, you got to have all the parts. I don't honestly truly believe that any one role is iconically more prepared than another. I was just joking around. Oh, yeah. So go ahead. You are prepared. You've got your top five. Right. Uh, Number five, as in the lowest on the ranking but still highest on the ranking that it gets on the board is a competitive nature to some degree. Uh, To some extent, whether you're in PvE or PvP, the deeps needs to have a competitive streak. You need to be able to compete with friends and against encounters to push yourself to perform more effectively as you hit it time and again. And also handle the other assignments you're going to get tasked with, whatever that control is or interrupts or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. And certainly there's an aspect of seeing big numbers and top in the meter, but that can stem from a good place, as deeps are always the majority, as in numbers within a group or a raid. You have more deeps than any other type of role. And if you can prove you're the top of the deeps in a group, handle all of your controls, you're still managing threat. I like to pose the following question to the other deeps in my group. Why don't you get on my level? <laughs> Competitive sure, nature. It's an- <laughs> sure, it's antagonistic. But if they're competing with me, it'd be in good fun. And I probably wouldn't harass them. But if some slacker thinks I'm going to carry them through content and suffer silently, they're mistaken. Interesting. Pushing one another to improve is part of the deep's mindset. Although we should try to make certain we're not just trolling or bullying. That's not the goal. Hmm. So competitive nature is number five. What is number four? Preparation. And we've been going into this a bit uh, 
theory craft, potentially research, peer consultation, farming for mats, upgrading gear, even side grades that you determine are just that minuscule percentage better for your spec or your style of play. Keeping your consumable stocks, learning what you can about the encounters or the PVE destination. Um, getting knowledge about other classes in PvP circumstance so you know what to expect when you're on the battlefield mm. and you're not just, I have no idea what just happened to me. And if the game devs totally screw your class and your playstyle, it's the willingness to roll an alt that can perform better. Back to wherever your normal levels were before you got hosed by whatever patch or expansion or nonsense came along. <sighs> Something tells me you I, have experienced I, I'm not, this. I'm not a fan of the reroll. I'm not a fan of the, of the making people reroll. No, it's or not, not making, but you know, have... it's not fun to say I have a max level character that's raiding ready, and then go, "Well, you're so awesome that we're going to slap you in the mouth." Well, I suppose if it's no longer viable in a raid. And I'm not the top one or two guys who are already in that spot. I'm not coming to a raid unless I change. And that being uh. the top spot of whatever class you are, you're safe. It doesn't really matter. As long as you're the top of your class, you're probably safe. But if you're third string and your class got hosed, and they have to choose between the third string of the better class or the third string of the worst class, Guess whose numbers are more important? Hmm. In a purely mechanical, numbers-weighted society. That's different when you're playing with a group of friends who don't really care if they're at the max level of pushing content and it's more about play what you want to play. That's by far a friendlier atmosphere. Interesting. What's your number three? awareness this ties back to that mantra watch your feet kill the ads kill the boss in addition to watching the environment and the pace of the fight it's important to notice when something specific changes the dynamics of a fight could be a healer trying to hide in pvp or a nasty spike caused by a mob which no one expected because it's a new ability or one that never got triggered before hmm. virtually any new stimuli that needs to be perceived and determined if it's important or not because excellent players don't wear blinders. Interesting. Number two. Efficiency. Timing, rhythm, pacing, mastering one's class mechanics, shaving off fractions of seconds despite lag by spamming the right buttons, cycling control, responding to changes effectively, i.e. making awareness meaningful. Hmm. If you see it and can't respond to it, congratulations. Generally having high number of actions per minute when stuff is happening shows high efficiency, but that's not always true. I guess it depends on what you do with those actions that makes the input. Yeah. If you're waiting to do a control and you squeeze in one too many attacks and can't get your control off, you screwed yourself and possibly the rape. Fair enough. And your number one ultimate doing, 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 DPS. Number one. It's, uh, it's actually a reoccurring theme of the number ones. It's passion. Being interested and entertained by your class and play style is essential. If you're not enjoying life as a deeps, perhaps the class isn't meshing with you or the play style that you've chosen might not be right. Mm. There's a lot of classes that can do damage, potentially. And if you manage to find a style that fits for you, it should motivate you to play to the best of your ability and to continually improve. Passion is motivating and fulfilling each encounter, whether boss or trash, each instance in PvP zone, a truly passionate deeps revels in the annihilation of enemies. The more spectacular the display of skill and mountain bodies, the better. <laughs> I just see skeletons being flung all over the place, left, right, and center. Ah. Remember, cool guys don't look at explosions. <laughs> Apart from Django. You saying Django isn't a cool guy? We're That's not going into that discussion. <laughs> right, so 
what we got from Steve for the top five going from five to one is being competitive, having preparation, awareness, efficiency, and passion. Now, what do you think? Where are you at, Iko? Would you agree? Well, uh, do you think something once, is missing? Once, once again, I find myself in the spot where a lot of views that I already agree with and would, buy, would uh, voice have already been heard. <laughs> There's um, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, no, no. It no, just no, goes to show I, I, that, I you mean, know, there is sort I, of this... I don't mean to come like I'm uh, bitching about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> How dare <laughs> you be wrong? <laughs> <laughs> or right. Um, <laughs> I would agree with competitiveness. I, you want Looking at it from, again, sort of a managerial kind of raid leader standpoint, you want your DPS to be pushing on each other. You want them to be pushing each other up. Because if they go into a raid, and to go nameless again, Raider A knows Raider B is on his heels. He's going to push harder to stay on top. And, and that means that Raider yeah. B is going to have to try harder to get behind him. And these guys, if, they, if you get competitive players going for it against each other without any of the drama that comes from, you know, rivalries mm. or see campfire top, for how to deal with situations see. like that Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can really get some amazing numbers that, that you might not see in other guilds because it comes down to the players okay and the players are just going for it like no person could ever inspire um preparation however, one that you didn't list that i'm gonna go for Mod um, mod modesty <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> now, this is what the hell does that word mean <laughs> What does the hell does the word modesty mean? <laughs> modesty is about... it. You need to know when to brag and have a laugh, and you need to know when not to be so far up your own arse with how good you are that you could still relate to other human beings. You know, I would, I or, would actually venture to say that when it comes to something like that, you're actually looking at something that should be applied across the board to players in general. Because, in, in you know, general, even in, if in, I am okay, the well, best I, I would, healer, I need to I have modesty. Even if I'm DPS. the best tank, same thing. Or do you think it's more uh, common the, the, DPS no, 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 for no, no. the more common trash DPS. talking? That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. Because of the competitive nature of DPS, because when a boss dies, right, if the tanks are alive and the healers are alive, everyone considered, and the tank, you know, the, Bob, uh, Moss didn't, uh, if the boss didn't run off murdering people, then you, they've done their job. The tanks and healers have done well. It then comes down to the DPS when you start, they all start looking at their meters and seeing how well they did individually because that matters to them. You, th this is the flip side of competitiveness when people start bra bragging and rubbing it in each other's faces, being know-it-alls, not right. behaving in a in a constructive manner to the rest of the DPS team. That you see the downside of it. You don't want arrogant DPSs, but you do want good, competent, well, well, well book read, well learned, well learned. Well learned DPSs who are going to share that knowledge with the rest of the guild as well as compete and just bring everyone's skill set and play up okay. to the next level. I completely <laughs> yeah. agree with you, by Basically, the way. Basically, get, get everyone on Aussie's level, is my point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, here is where we take the serious part of the conversation and everything that we have learned from everything that you have said for anyone who is future watching these shows and looking back. Um, when we come to revisit the trilogy again, it'll be interesting to see in a couple of years' time if it has changed or not, if there has been an evolution or if it's just that's it to human nature. But now, because I have you two on as guests, although Iko is kind of guest slash host slash writer slash I don't know. Just general MMO, MMO buff team member, I think, at this point. Yeah, probably that's the probably way. the easiest way for me to torture you. I so. would like to know from you what the greatest experience you have ever had as a DPS. Now, I've let you go first before, Aussie, so now I'm going to pick on Aiko. Oh, no, let Aussie go first. I'm just trying to find a little okay. bit of content. Go ahead, Aussie. Please share with us what was the greatest <laughs> experience you ever had as this. Well, this actually ties back to competition and camaraderie, where it's not just harassing people. It's that modesty that I was actually bringing up. I wholeheartedly agree that you need to be able to not just spur one another on, but also teach. And sometimes I've taught people, and they've gotten very good. But a couple times throughout my gaming past, I've run into a person that was just 
the same skill set, the same focus, the same drive that I was at. And we're, well, when you're the top one and two, and that alternates between fights, not just raids, but between individual fights, there's a camaraderie that's shared in those small corners of the interweb. And I remember the character name of one of the two guys who I remember doing this camaraderie shtick with, where we would have raids every week or twice a week or whatever, and consistently, one of the two of us was number one and the other was number two. And it would flip back and forth. I can think all of the two time. names who did that to you. Yeah, and being in that spot where you have someone pushing you that hard and that you can joke with and have a laugh with and to a degree, you know, look at all the other people and try and motivate them as well. That's the best memory I've had as a Deeps, where it was raiding and instancing with friends, being both competitive and inspirational, motivational, and just enjoying every combat, because you're not just playing it for the numbers anymore. You're not just mm. playing it for the graphic of this boss kill. And you're certainly not playing it for the loot that drops. If I played MMOs for the loot that drops, I would have quit a long time ago. It's about the companions that you build and the fun you have with them. Ah. <sighs> Now that, so, now that I'm um, thinking back on all the years that I have known you all, see, I could probably list five in the varying situations. Um, I mean, everyone from Stormy to Trudala to Dragon. Um, I mean, just names. I'm name dropping people. <laughs> yeah, like, You know, old school people here who used to just... And I remember seeing the way that the competition played out. There was a bit of light trolling but it wasn't degradational it was supportive it was oh what's that you didn't get the little mini egg roll that gave you the rage that allowed me to kill everything oh that's mine i'm stealing that one from you but there was a camaraderie built and it wasn't mm -hmm. out to hurt each other it was literally for lack of a better term it was comedic for everyone else watching yeah, it the, really the raid was. was going to be amused mm -hmm. by the antics that the people at the top are joking about because they're not picking on anyone mm -mm. saying, like, you're doing crap. They're poking at each other to try and spur them on to the next ridiculousness. And when one gets mind control, very likely nuking the other during trash. Because that never happened in any of the raids that I ran. <laughs> I was never I had the to one put a ban on that. <laughs> it got to the point where it was interrupting the raid flow. I had to put a ban <laughs> on that. That was so bad. It was like, oh, someone's mind control. Oh, nope, never mind. They're dead. Rest them. Let's keep going. But yeah. <laughs> so what about you, Aika? What is your greatest experience as a deepser? Not as a healer, because you've they, now mentioned as... you've done both roles. I want deepsies. Yeah, yeah. Um, as a deeps, it would be... Um, the events of the video that I just linked there, and shameless, shameless guild representation bump there, but I think <laughs> I'm allowed it considering the antics that have been going on tonight. I will um, make certain to include no it in. I what you're talking about. For forgive the quality because it was from, I think, back in late 2008, 2009 time, um, but it was a battle that we kind of kicked up and started as a guild um, in Aeon, in the lower abyss, and it went on it escalated and one of the things i love about world pvp is the escalations that you get to the point where i think we were outnumbered by a solid three to four to one and <laughs> there is a scene in the video where you'll just watch my character go flying out into the sea of red at which point everybody as a guild and i know this is meant to be my favorite part of the dps because i'm just sat there nuking away on the healers and trying to collapse their backline so we can actually win the fight but <laughs> Watching an entire sort of guild and a team react to how I, I got pulled in and how other players were getting beaten on, it was just the best fun I've ever had as a DPS in an MMO, just working as part of a unit. Interesting. I mean, the, the sort of video content there, it ends badly for us, I won't lie, and like an 18-year-old me can be heard laughing at all my dead guild mates as I flee <laughs> away with her pop wings, and I just, I literally, I just, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, everyone go, pop wings and go. And, and so like, supportive. 
Oh, mate. There is oh. the modesty. You know, we've got the Jeez. egos for the tanks and the healers, but where's the modesty <laughs> and the DPS, which is so the antithesis of what you'd expect. But uh, let me do this. Um, Hellfire Seppuku was a great thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And it was very annoying to the rest of us who had to pay repair bills, but because you killed yeah. yourself, you didn't have to get any kind of damage yeah. to your gear, and it was really annoying. But that's design choice and a discussion for another night. So let me do this. Let me start off by saying to you, Aiko, and to you, Aussie, thank you very much for coming on and discussing DPS. It is interesting to me, as we have come full circle, and we've now gotten ourselves to a point where we've done healing, we've done DPS, We've done tanking. It just seems interesting how much there is in common and how there is slight, subtle differences between those different roles. For example, you didn't hear competitiveness when discussing tanking or healing. You know, that is interesting to me. So we'll have to go back, have to do a little look through and see if we can't pull all the stuff together list-wise and put it all smack dab, which of course I'll do with a quick bites. Yay! So, yes, and those of you who do not know, we have a new thing going on on YouTube where I am picking the best random little bits here and there from each one of our shows and throwing it up for a snippet for you to watch as a quick bite. Do me a favor. If you like them, like them. And, you know, obviously subscribe. Also, tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Um, tell, tell your, your dog. Tell your dog. Tell your goldfish flowers for those of you who watch that anime. Um, and that suddenly things get weird <laughs> just throwing it out there but anyway as a reminder to everybody if you have a question you wish us to throw to Brad McQuaid and the team when it comes to um, Pantheon Rise of the Fallen please send me an email at voice at mmabuff.tv our contact form will be operational very soon on the website and you will be able to have that involved but it's one of my tasks for this week uh, also, as a reminder, tomorrow, Vistolm is joining Blank Space and Screenager as we tackle recruitment in the campfire. Wednesday, you're going to be introduced to my brand new host for Top Draws. We discuss all things TCG, SCG, and, of course, Hearthstone-related. And on Friday, we should have Kai Dream back on the Cosmotronic as Ms. Pagasimov and myself, along with the gorgeous Kai, discuss all things Wildstar. Woo! In the process, we have some varying bits and pieces coming content-wise to the website, including an article by our very own Ico, going deeper and deeper into things that are occurring within Wildstar. We also have a PvP piece coming out this week as well, with one of our newest writers. So, please, by all means, keep in touch. I am always looking for fun things to do. Community manager, plug, shameless. Okay, beyond Speaking that... Speaking of shameless plugs that are fun related oh um, for those that watch pseudo's various streams um you might see me in games running around with her shooting stuff or packing it up into little bits and pieces yes yeah, so if you see aussie and the name now you know who it is is running around with me it's me yeah it, it's it. you'll hear his voice as well there is something new that i'm working on that will be coming out very very soon but that you've only seen a small little rubber ducky piece of. And you'll just have to wait until it starts up. And yes, the Hive, about, uh... you have missed quite a bit. We have discovered DPS, and I am going to let you know, the Hive, that there's one thing that was mentioned as uh, important traits that we didn't mention as healers. And then I'm going to pause, take us off of this so that we know where to cut for YouTube, and then we'll come back and just have a little bit of a random natter. And that, the Hive, believe it or not, is DPS should have modesty. <laughs> Just saying. What's up with that? Hey, 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 hey. You guys agreed with it in the end. We'll I be agree, right back. On the back end of competitiveness. Say bye byes Ta-da. Ta-da, kiddos. Oh, my. <laughs>